Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be talking about some murder. Now, the whole month of March I've been doing a uh, satanic panic kind of thing. So, uh, today's case we're going to be talking about that of Ricky Casso or Richard Allen Casso Jr. He's also known as the Acid King. Well, or there's also another name that he goes by, which is the Say You Love Satan Killer. I love that. I think it's so cute. So cute. Anywho, so what's good to know about him is that he murdered his friend. And obviously there's two other teens present at this time. And there's a lot of drugs involved. Well, okay. So... Let's go through this. Uh, Ricky was born on the 29th of March of 1967 in Huntington, New York. Now, he was the son of a local history teacher and a football coach at a affluent, the affluent um, Cold Spring Harbor High School. Now, Ricky was often thrown out of his home as a young teen, and he lived on the streets of New Northport. He usually slept in the woods or in cars, garages, backyards, houses of friends and he mainly was thrown out due to his drug use and the way he acted he was not a very uh, not an ideal teen we'll say that now he often took drugs this mainly included marijuana lsd hashish pcp and micro dots which he believed to be mescaline and mescaline kind of affects you like lsd does but not really um, he also was known to deal drugs in Northport as well. So he was not a, um, how do I say this? He was not a golden child. Now he was acquainted with some members of a loosely organized group of friends and they referred themselves as the Knights, the Knights of the Black Circle. <clears throat> well, when they investigated the murder of his friend that you'll t we'll talk about. Um, they incorrectly report the Knights as being a satanic cult. This is where the whole Satanist thing comes in. Now, allegedly, Ricky participated in occult ceremonies, most, mostly in Northport, and celebrated Walpurgis Night at the Amityville Horror House. Now, Walpurgis Night is basically, it's a feast. And it's just, it's the eve of Christian day of St. Walpurga. That's all it is. Well, and this celebration happened in 1984 at the Amityville Horror House, which is a very beautiful house, by the way. I mean, it's been for sale a few times. I think it's actually currently for sale. I would live in that house. I think it's quite beautiful. Then again, I would also live in the Velisca Axe Murder House, but that's because I'm just a weird person and I just really, really enjoy older houses. Anywho, that's besides the point. Besides the point. So Ricky also expressed to his friends the interest in the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey. Now, this is also where more of the, the Satanist thing comes in. There's one occasion, at least one occasion, his parents admitted him into a psychiatric hospital, and that's the South Oaks Psychiatric Hospital. It was formerly known as the Amityville Asylum in Amityville, New York, and this was for drug rehabilitation and psychiatric care. Um, in the year prior to the murder that we will be talking about, he was arrested for digging in a colonial area era grave inside of a local cemetery and less than a month after his arrest for this crime he contracted pneumonia and was tr was treated at long island jewish hospital now during his stay at this hospital this is when he tried they tried to convince doctors to commit him for involuntary psychiatric care but the psychiatrists believed that he just exhibited antisocial behavior but it was neither psychotic or violent anger and he was released to recover from his bout of pneumonia. So his parents fought to commit him, but they didn't listen to him, basically. So his friend that is murdered is Gary Lowers. Now, there's a conflict between Ricky and Gary. Sometime earlier, the day that this happened, the day 
that this happened on June 19th of 1984, sometime earlier. Gary stole about 10 bags of PCP from Ricky's coat. And this is after Ricky passed out at a party. Now, Ricky confronted him after the incident, and Gary immediately returned five of the 10 bags of PCP. Now, Gary promised to repay Ricky $50 for the five bags of PCP that had been used. Now, allegedly, Ricky beat Gary on four different occasions. On the night of the murder, Ricky visited a small gazebo um, in the New Cow Harbor Park and borrowed a radio from his friend. Now, he then invited Gary to get high with him, which you think he would still be pissed at him because, you know, Gary stole his PCP, but you do strange things while you're on drugs. Now, he then invited Gary to get high with him and his friends, Troiano and Quinones. Um, yeah, so it's Jimmy Troiano and Albert Quinones. Those are the two friends that are with them. And they ended up going into the Aztecia woods and they set up a camp and ingested several doses or hits of what they believed to be mescaline, but it wasn't mescaline. They ingested the tablets. They were called purple microdots. And while they were referred to as mescaline on the street, they were actually LSD. So they, they did a lot of LSD. Um, they then smoked several bags of PCP before attempting to start a fire, but the only available firewood was wet and wouldn't ignite. So Gary then uses socks as well as the sleeves from his denim coat as kindling for the fire for it to start. At some point during the night, the situation escalated into violence, which that doesn't surprise me due to the fact of how much LSD they did, how much PCP they did. So they were really fucking rocked off their socks and they were really paranoid. So that does not surprise me that this escalated into violence. Apparently, Ricky was scuffling with Gary and he bit him on the neck and then stabbed him in the chest. Ricky then continued his assault on Gary and later Albert claimed that... So Albert claimed that Jimmy helped Ricky and held Gary down during the attack. And during testimony that was given to Al well, given by Albert in exchange for immunity, Albert claimed that Jimmy did not, well, he later claimed that Jimmy did not also assist him, which it's kind of like you say at first he assisted him, but then he doesn't. Gary was stabbed somewhere between 17 to 36 times, and his eyeball was possibly sliced out during the stabbing. Now, also during the attack, this is when Ricky commanded Gary's to say, say you love Satan, which is where the say you love Satan killer thing comes in. Gary in, is said to have simply said, I love my mother, before finally giving in to Ricky's demands of what he wanted. After the attack, this is when Ricky and Jimmy covered Gary's body with leaves and branches and left. Now, the actual date of the murder was often misreported by the media and the police as being June 16th of 1984, when in retrospect, in 2018, it was actually revealed that the murder had taken place three days later on June 19th, 1984. So, after he kills Gary... Ricky bragged about it to the other friends that he has. And he also claimed that Satan manifested himself in the form of a crow after killing Gary and that the crow had cawed and something had he interpreted as Satan's approval of this murder. Now, Gar Ricky even brought several of his friends to the body of Gary before he and Jimmy returned to the woods to bury Gary's decomposing body. In a shallow grave. But it wasn't until two weeks went by on the 1st of July that the murder was reported to police by an honest tip. Now, on the 4th of July, 1984, this is when the police used cadaver dogs to search the Aztecia woods and they recovered the decomposing and mutilated body of Gary Lowers. Ricky and Jimmy were both arrested the next day. Unfortunately, because Ricky is a wimp, the 7th of July, he committed suicide by hanging himself in a cell. 
Jimmy Troiano signed two confessions of which he later recanted. Albert gave witness testimony that Jimmy helped Ricky during the murder, later denied it during his testimony at Jimmy's trial. Now, due to Albert being drugged at the time of the killing, his testimony was brought into question, and Jimmy was acquitted of secondary murder in April of 1985. So that, my friends, is the lovely case of Ricky, lovely Ricky Casso, or the Acid King. Now, I, I get, guess you could probably guess why he's called the Acid King, because he was a drug dealer, and he was highly fucked up on acid. But yeah. Yep. I hope you guys enjoyed this lovely little quick one, because, uh, man, yeah. And I'll see you guys in another video. Bye, guys.